In the previous section of the course, we changed workbook appearance, formatting cells, defining styles, and so on. In this section of the course, we're going to focus on specific data by using filters. In this first section, we're going to limit the data that appears on your screen. For this exercise, I'm using the package exceptions workbook. I opened the package exceptions underscore start workbook and then saved it under this new name. To start, on the by route worksheet, click any cell in the range B2 to F27. Then on the home tab, in the editing group, click sort and filter and then click filter. When we do, a filter error appears in each column's header cell. Click the date column filter arrow, and then from the menu that appears, clear the March checkbox. Excel removes the check from the March checkbox and changes the state of the Select All and 2010 checkboxes to indicate that some items within those categories have been filtered. Now click OK. Excel hides all rows that contain a date from the month of March. Now click the center column filter arrow, and then from the menu that appears, clear the Select All checkbox. Excel clears all the checkboxes in the list, and now we select the Midwest checkbox and then click OK. Doing so causes Excel to display only those exceptions that occurred in the Midwest Distribution Center during the month of April. On the Home tab, in the Editing group, click Sort and Filter, and then click Clear. Excel clears all active filters, but leaves the filter errors in place. Now click the Route Column Headers Filter arrow, and then type RT9 in the search box. The filter list displays only those routes with an identifier that includes the characters RT9. Click OK. And Excel applies the filter, displaying exceptions that occurred on routes with identifiers that contain the string RT9. Now click the March Daily Count tab sheet. That displays the March Daily Count worksheet. Click any cell in the Excel table. And now, click the Exceptions column filter, point to Number Filters, and then click Top 10. When we do, the Top 10 Auto Filter dialog box opens. In the middle field, type 5. The filter as we've set it will display the top five items in the exceptions column. Click OK to have Excel display those table rows. Now we click the exceptions column filter arrow and then click clear filter from exceptions, which causes Excel to remove the filter. Now click on the date column filter arrow, point to date filters, and then click custom filter. the custom auto filter dialog box opens. Now in the upper left list, click the down arrow and then click is after or equal to. In the upper right list, click 3-8-2010. In the lower left list, click is before or equal to. And in the lower right list, click 3-14-2010. You've created a filter that will find any date that is after or equal to March 8th and before or equal to March 14th. In other words, the seven days from March 8th through March 14th of the year 2010. Now click OK. And Excel displays the exceptions just for those days. Now on the Quick Access Toolbar, click the Undo button to remove your filter. 
In this section, I showed you how to limit the data that appears in your worksheet. In the next section, I'll show you how to manipulate worksheet data. In the previous segment of the course, we limited data that appears on the screen. In this segment, we are going to manipulate worksheet data. For this exercise, we are going to use the for follow-up underscore start workbook. I have already opened that workbook and saved it under the new name for follow-up. First, we select cells G3 through G27. When we do, Excel displays the average of the values, the count of the values, in other words, the number of selected cells, and the sum of the values in the selected cells in the auto-calculate area of the status bar. Now in cell J3, and I will drag the scroll bar up, and we'll click cell J3, we type the formula equal, aggregate, left parentheses 1, comma 1, comma G3, colon G27, and a right parentheses, press return, and Excel displays the value 15.76 in cell J3. This value is the average of the values in the cell range G3 through G27. Now on the data tab, in the sort and filter group, we click the advanced button. In the advanced filter dialog box, in the list range field, type E2 colon E27. Now select the unique records only checkbox and click OK. When we do, Excel displays the rows that contain the first occurrence of each different value in the selected range, which in this case was E2 through E27. Now on the data tab, in the sort and filter group, click Clear. Excel removes the filter. Now in cell H3, type the formula equal if left parentheses rand, R-A-N-D, left parentheses right parentheses, less than 0 0.15, comma, double quote, yes, double quote, comma, double quote, no, double quote, right parentheses. This formula creates a random value, a decimal between 0 and 1, and checks if that value is less than 0.15. If it is, the formula displays yes. If not, the formula displays no. Press return, and Excel displays the result. Now to copy the formula so that it covers cells H3 through H27, click cell H3, grab the fill handle at the bottom right corner of the cell, and drag the fill handle until it covers cell H27. When we do, Excel copies the formula into every cell in the range H3 to H27. Now, with the range H3 to H27 still selected, on the Home tab, in the Clipboard group, click Copy. Excel copies the range's contents to the Microsoft Office Clipboard, and then also in the clipboard group, click the Paste Arrows Down button and click the first icon in the Paste Values row. When you do, Excel replaces the cells formulas with the formula's current results. In this segment of the course, we manipulated worksheet data. In the next segment, we are going to define valid sets of values for ranges of cells. In the previous segment of the course, we manipulated worksheet data. In this segment, we are going to define valid sets of values for ranges of cells. This exercise uses the credit underscore start workbook. I've already opened the workbook and saved it under the new name of credit. First, we select the cell range J4 through J7. 
And yes, cell J7 is currently blank, but we will add a value to it later in this exercise. Now on the Data tab, in the Data Tools group, click the Data Validation button. The Data Validation dialog box opens and displays the Settings page. In the Allow list, click Whole Number. Boxes labeled Minimum and Maximum appear below the data box. Now in the data list, click Less Than or Equal To. Now Excel only displays the Maximum box. In the Maximum box, type 25,000. Clear the Ignore Blank checkbox so a user cannot enter a blank value or leave a cell blank. And now click the Input Message tab to display the input message page of the dialog box. In the title box, type Enter Limit. Now in the input message box, type Please Enter the customer's credit limit comma, space, omitting the dollar sign and any commas, period. Now click the Error Alert tab. In the Style list, if necessary, click Stop. Excel displays the Stop icon. Now in the Title box, click Error and click OK. Excel applies the validation rule to the selected cells J4 through J7. Now click cell J7. A screen tip with the title Enter Limit and the text Please Enter the Customer's Credit Limit omitting the dollar sign and any commas appears near cell J7. In cell J7, type 25001. again with no commas, and press Enter. When we do, Excel displays an error dialog box. Click Cancel, and Excel removes the value from cell J7. Now, with J7 still selected, type 25,000, and press Enter. Excel accepts the input, because it met the data validation rules. Now on the Data tab, in the Data Tools group, click the Data Validation button's down arrow and click Circle Invalid Data. Excel circles data that was previously entered that violates the validation rule. Now in the Data Validation list, click clear validation circles. When we do, Excel clears the circle. In this segment of the course, we defined valid sets of values for ranges of cells, and that concludes this section on focusing on specific data by using filters. In the next section of the course, we are going to reorder and summarize data.